and welcome back. Thank you. I am wondering if you can describe to us what your workouts this off season have been like, particularly, or I guess this over these last couple of months as they ramped up towards the season, and particularly your workouts that we saw surface with Kyrie, what that was like. Uh, we just, I mean, we just played pickup, got in, got shots up, um, but the consistency was what you know. He, he did it four or five times a week, you know, so normal work, but it was good to, you know, finally get back out there and start playing up and down again. Our next question comes from Greg Logan with Newsday. Uh, Kevin, uh, Steve Nash talked today about how your, your passion to play is infectious and how excited you are to be back. Can you tell from what you've done so far on the court, uh, if you can, regain the Kevin Durant MVP caliber level that you've played at in the past. I saw Iguodala predicted you would be MVP this year. Do you think you're going to be capable of that, or can you tell yet? Uh, I feel good playing. I mean, you know, I mean I'm mean, i not even thinking about awards at all. I mean, this is about taking it a day at a time. I feel good, though. Our next question comes from Mark Spears with the undefeated. Hey, Kevin. What up? Hey, um, when you were watching uh, from outside the bubble, how, how did you take the social justice movement going on? And I'm sure you were probably a little eager to wish you could have been a part of that. And what is going to be the key for you guys going forward and bringing that into next season? Um, I I was very proud of the NBA for allowing the players to have their own voice uh, you know, surrounding social justice. And guys have been, you know, working in their communities for years and years before this, you know, so if we continue to do that, then, you know, I mean, that's really been my approach is to continue to do that, do my work that I've been doing in my communities already and, you know, support the guys, you know, moving forward. So we'll see what happens. Our next question comes from Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, Kevin. How you doing? I'm uh, checking to see, uh, when I saw you on with Stewie, you were talking about uh, uh, just having to be smart in the rehab and not try to do things too, too much. When you get into the season, have not played for a year and a half, how, uh, how difficult will that be to be judicious, you know, in the minutes and rest and not try to go overboard? It'll definitely be difficult because um, I enjoy playing. And, you know, if I'm in a game and coach want to pull me out early unexpectedly, of course, I'll you know, try to push back. But I know they have my best interest. Uh, but like I said, we're going to take it a day at a time. I mean, you know, first day of individual workouts, you know, it's cool. We just go from there. Our next question comes from Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, Kevin. Uh, first and foremost, happy belated Thanksgiving. Hope you enjoyed that time with, with you and yours. Um, the, the average person can't necessarily comprehend an Achilles injury because they've never had one, so they don't know what it feels like to have that. Uh, can you kind of explain what it was like to rehab? Uh, and had you ever sustained an Achilles injury in the past as, 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 that so you had a point of reference and saying, oh, this is what an Achilles injury is like? Or was that all new order for you? And what was it kind of like traversing that injury? Yeah, it was definitely new. I never experienced that injury before. Um, not even strained anything close to that. Um, but learning how to walk again, you know, well, not walking and, and getting assistance in everything that you do for the first three or four months was tough. Uh, I've been through surgeries and injuries before, but, you know, the longest you know, recovery I had was three months. But the first phase of the Achilles was three months long, and you couldn't walk or run. You had to use a scooter. So I think just those milestones of reaching, like learning how to walk and learning how to run, and jump again, and getting used to certain movements again, I think that's that's underestimated. People don't realize that. And um, Achilles, is this, that ligament is one of the most, the strongest ligaments in your body. You know, so for that to pop, you got to build that up, and that takes a while. Our next question comes from Bruce Beck with NBC New York. Hey, Kevin, the team expectations are high. Do you embrace those expectations? And how do you share that as well with your teammates in terms of 
pursuing the ultimate goal of winning a title? Well, our only goal is to be the best version of ourselves every single day individually and bring that together and work as a unit. And uh, outside noise from people who are hoping that we fail, hoping that they see a show or get entertained by some drama. I mean, we can't control that stuff, you know? So we just worried about, you know, who we are individually and then bringing that together as a unit each and every day. Only the people in this building matter. Our next question comes from Rachel Nichols with ESPN. Hey, Kevin, it's really nice to see you back. Uh, you were talking about how hard the rehab is from an Achilles injury, and there's such a wide swing in recovery. Some guys are never themselves again, and some bounce back really strong. So was there a particular point in your recovery when you could really feel confident that, yeah, I am going to be myself again, that you had that, that moment? Who knows? I just got to see how I feel in a real NBA game again. Our next question comes from David Aldridge with The Athletic. Hey, Kevin, um, you are at a, a different part of your career than you've been at at any point. I just wonder how you have imagined yourself as a, as a player and leader at this stage of your career and some of the things that you think you really bring to the table now that maybe you didn't bring as a young player and some of the things that you have to compensate for being an older player. Um. <clears throat> I always brought that excitement to the game. I always brought that enthusiasm that I enjoy getting up every day and playing basketball and my life being about just the game of basketball. I always enjoyed that, but I always needed to see more in the NBA experience more. And I think over the last 13 years, you know, I've experienced so much as a basketball player and it's molded me and made me to who I am today. And my approach has just always been to be, to work as hard as I can on every rep um, and practice, shoot around individual workouts. Hopefully my teammates follow that lead and, you know, find out who they are for themselves. And for me, in, in, in the games, I just try to play as hard as I can on the defensive side of the ball and be efficient, you know. And, um, that's just been my approach and how I feel like I'm going to help this team going forward. Our next question comes from Otis Livingston with CBS New York. Hey, Kevin, you're so close to returning to the court. So is Kyrie. In the offseason, there have been so many people that have talked about how they expect you and Kyrie to play together. Some talk with drama, some talk with success. How do you envision that playing out this year on the court? After all, you guys are really good friends, too. Um, we're going to see. I mean, uh, we both respect each other's games, and we know each other's games inside and out. And you know what good basketball, championship level basketball looks like. So it's all about crafting every single day with the group and, you know, coming together and seeing what's the best way for us to play. You know, it's, it's still early in the season and, you know, it was COVID and guys have been separated all summer and doing their own thing. So, you know, it's going to take some time for us to figure out the best way for us to approach this thing. But, you know, we're looking forward to that challenge. Our next question comes from Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Hey, Kevin, welcome back. You talked about, you know, the difficulty of coming back from the Achilles. I'm curious, did you kind of pick the brain of any athlete, whether in basketball or another sport, that had to come back from it and, and what worked for them and what didn't or what they learned from it for your own process? Or, you know, with everyone's body being different, you kind of just stuck to, you know, what, what your people were telling you? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying not to bug too many people. I mean, everybody got their stuff going on. So I just try to keep everything that I was thinking about in, some, in, in my circle and, have so many ears and eyes, you know, that are listening to me and watch me work out and give me input. And so I, was, I think I was covered in that in, in that aspect. And uh, but a lot, I know a lot of people who have, you know, reached out and shown support and and, and wishing and hoping that I, that I come out and play well this year. So I appreciate that. Our next question comes from Mike Vaccaro with the New York Post. Hi, Kevin. I'm curious, as frustrating as last year must have been for you. Did you learn anything watching as off, as much as you had to watch on the sidelines and practice, whatever? Last year wasn't that frustrating, to be honest. I mean, I enjoy having some me time away from a lot of y'all and the NBA life in general. Uh, but uh, learning the game, that's just a constant thing. You know, not even just from watching my team, but watching the NBA in general and watching the finals and watching, you know, young players coming to the league. I feel like I'm constantly consuming information about basketball 
and uh, it's only going to make me better and our team better. Our next question comes from Tina Servasio with Fox 5 New York. Kevin, it's good to see you back with all this time that you've been, not away from basketball, because obviously you're with the team, but your days away from playing in an actual competitive game. What are your emotions that you will be playing this season? I don't know. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna see how I feel going forward, but I'm excited about, you know, first day and, you know, putting on my practice jersey again. You know, I'm ex I, I, you know, it was, it was a cool feeling today. We'll see how I feel tomorrow. Our next question comes from Tom Dowd with BrooklynNets.com. Hey, Kevin, with uh, Steve Nash coming in as head coach, obviously you guys worked together previously. What was that experience like? How did the relationship develop? And what does that experience tell you about what you can expect from him as a head coach? It was a different experience. Steve came in probably once a month to work work guys out on the, on the court. And as a head coach, your role is a little different. And, uh, you know, he's doing more walking the sidelines and, and, and coaching teams while the assistant coaches are running a couple drills, stuff like that. I'm sure, uh, you know, his approach is going to be different, you know, being a development guy and, being a head coach, you know, you just the demands is different. So I'm excited about his development and us as a team. We're going to see moving forward. Our next question comes from Vince Goodwill with Yahoo Sports. Hey, Katie, uh, I'm curious. When you're rehabbing from an injury and you're playing basketball and you see what happened, you know, to Clay Thompson, who's going through something similar, do you – is there a line between going – hard and worrying about re-injury in the in a situation like that or do you just play and try to take that stuff out of your mind yeah i'm just trying to play and try, and try not to worry about it uh, if it happens it happens uh, you know, sometimes when you tend to focus too much on not getting injured you probably go out there and get injured you know so i just try to go as hard as i can and live with the results our next question comes from Chris Mannix with Sports Illustrated. Hey, Kevin. Uh, you had a chance to work out with John Wall recently. I wonder what you thought of how he looked and if you guys talked at all about coming back from a similar injury. Yeah, he looked amazing to me. He looked great. Um, yeah, of course, we talked about, you know, being away from the game and what we both learned individually as human beings outside of being basketball players about ourselves. You know, it was a, it was a deep combo we had about, you know, being out. And um, I'm excited to see John play again. It's, you know, he's been out for two years now. And, you know, I know he wants to go out there and play great basketball and lead that team. So I'm excited for him that he's back. And a lot of guys have been injured over the last couple of years. It's, it's just sucked to see. So hopefully this season everybody stays so, uh, healthy. Our next question comes from Brian Mahoney with the Associated Press. Hey, hey Kevin, uh, you mentioned a, a few questions ago, kind of wait and see when the season starts, how you're going to play. Uh, I'm just wondering sort of what that's like for you. Uh, you know, do you ever in your career, have you ever wondered how you're going to look? Uh, I mean, have you ever had any nerves or, or just are you so used to being good that it never crosses your mind to wonder? I definitely, I definitely used to have crazy anxiety wondering how I was going to play the next day or the next series, you know, and, I, and it used to drive me crazy, you know what I'm saying? And I, for, for my mental health, I guess, it's easier for me to have this approach of just, you know, waiting to see what happens. And I just, and then falling back on the work that I put in, you know what I'm saying? And if I fall back on that work, then, you know, I have to worry too much about what happened. I already know it'll come naturally. Our next question comes from Sopan Deb with the New York Times. <clears throat> Hey, Kevin, I was wondering if you could tell us, are, are you 100% right now or are you limited at all in practice or can you go, can, are you physically going 100%? Oh, yeah. Every, every drill that I've done, I've been going as hard as I could. I don't mean 100%. I mean, what it was, I mean, shit, I've been in the league for 14 years. Even if I didn't have an Achilles, I probably wouldn't be 100%, you know? So, um, you know, it's the wear and tear over time, I guess. Uh, but I feel, I feel solid. Our next question comes from Ian Begley with SNY. Kevin, thanks for doing this. I hope your friends and family are well, given the circumstances. Um, just curious with the there's reports about James Harden, you know, targeting Brooklyn as a potential destination uh, to come via trade. Do you address like your teammates at all about, about rumors like that? Because I'm sure that's not going to be the only one. 
Um, or do you just kind of let that stuff sit and not talk to guys about it? No, I was just, I mean, we're all professionals and we just go about our days, you know, come in and go to work and don't go back home. And whatever happens, guys will be prepared for anything. Our next question comes from Justin Walters with PIX11. Hi, Kevin. Hope all is well with you and yours. Was wondering if you picked up any new hobbies during the rehabilitation process to help you cope with it. And do you have a different approach or even appreciation for the game you spoke about, obviously putting on your shorts and being on the court, the exciting feeling? Do you have now a different mentality now that something was taken away from you and your back hair? Uh, I didn't pick up any new hobbies. Uh, uh, I was pretty much uh, just focused on rehab, I guess, now I reflect on it. I didn't really think about picking up anything new in this time. Uh, what was the second question you said again? I'm sorry. Say the second question again. Yeah, sure. The second question is now that you're back on the court, do you have a different appreciation or even approach to the game when something was taken away from you? You just spoke about that exciting feeling, having the shorts back on, being with your yeah. teammates. No, I'm, I always appreciate the game. I always was grateful for, to play this game every single day. And um, uh, I, I'm just, I'm looking forward to having some new energy, some fresh energy, uh, you know, to play with on this team. And, you know, especially the younger guys on the team, I'm looking forward to helping them anywhere that I can and, you know, telling them about the experiences that I went through in this league and hopefully it, it kind of shapes and helps them as they go throughout this league. So I'm just looking forward to stepping into this position in this role and, you know, and I'm, ex I'm excited about taking it on. Next question comes from Joe Varden with The Athletic. Hi, Kevin. Um, you've already been asked about uh, James Harden a little bit here, but I mean, the, the reports are pretty wide that you two talked while you were working out in L.A. and apparently he expressed interest in wanting to join you. So is there anything that you could share with us about that conversation? And, and then do you relay that James wants to play with the Nets to Sean as soon as you hear something like that? I don't know where you're making these stories up that me and James talked about any of this that'll work out. Like, I don't know where that came from. And, James is a friend of mine, but I let the front office handle all of that stuff. I was just so focused on working out. I heard all the noise, and I heard that, you know, James potentially wanted to come to the Nets, but he, anybody can make up stories. Anybody can write a story, and it, and it, take, and it gets some traction. So, you know, nothing's ever set in stone until it's, till it's set in stone. So I never thought too much about it. I just focused on myself, and my teammates probably did the same thing, and, you know. Just move forward. Last question for Kevin comes from James Herbert with CBS Sports. Hey, Kevin. Um, you've had a long time to like watch this team last year, think about how the pieces might fit, think about how your game meshes with the other guys. Like, How much time have you spent kind of envisioning what it will look like, and what is it like now finally kind of getting a chance to get out there with these guys in the coming days and work on that kind of stuff rather than just kind of imagining it and talking about it and thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, uh, basketball is pretty simple. And, uh, you know, everybody throughout the whole league runs kind of like the same sets and the different terminologies. And so, you know, being around the league for so long, you kind of see how things can work from the outside. And, but it's different when you get on the floor and you see guys' tendencies and see how they play when they're tired or see how they play with, you know, different ball handlers on the floor and they got to stand in the corner. So I think it's just a matter of us uh, adjusting to each other and growing with each other uh, on a day to day. But we all have high IQ guys um, that know how to mesh well with anyone. Thank you for your time, Kevin. We appreciate it. Okay.